Geeking Interviews at the QCon New York Conference. My name's Stephen Chin. I'm the Java Community Manager working for Oracle. And I'm joined by Daniel Bryant from the UK. How are yep. you doing, man? Good, thanks. Good. It's nice, uh, nice to be in the US once again. Yes, yes. It's great to, to see you, I think, everywhere except the UK. Pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> I travel as much as I can. I love the UK, I'm not going to lie. But as much as I can, I like to travel as well. But you were, you were speaking in the UK last week at um, a couple conferences. Yeah, so I was speaking at DevOps UK, one of my favorite conferences, uh, about uh, DevOps with my friend uh, Steve Poole from IBM. So that was a lot of fun. We had some cool. great feedback actually around the DevOps kind of thing there. And then also Container Shed, a conference we uh, co-organized at OpenCredo. We were talking there around um, the use of containers, how does it change applications, that kind of thing, and looking at stuff like Kubernetes, Mesos, all that goodness. So uh, nice. a whole bunch of interesting stuff was discussed. Those two conferences together were just an so amazing thing. So what do you, what do you think about the, um, the attendees between the two conferences? How does it differ between the DevOps attendees and the container attendees? Yeah, massively, Stephen, in, in fairness. So DevOps is very much a sort of Java-focused or JVM-focused conference with a bit of JavaScript and other cool stuff chucked in the mix, whereas Container Shed is, is very much in the DevOps space, looking at um, you know Docker, Rocket, Kubernetes, Mesos, those kind of things. So massively generalizing here, and I'll probably get shot down on Twitter for this, <laughs> but <laughs> DevOps tends to be um, more developer-focused, whereas Container Shared more operator-focused. Um, again, not okay. you know neither one is better than the other, it's just like two, two sides of the same coin, really. We're just trying to deliver valuable software, but some people are more inclined to build the systems, others more to deploy and operate them. Got it, got it, that makes sense. Okay, but we're gonna chat a little bit about these seven deadly sins of microservices. Yeah, yeah. So Hopefully, hopefully we'll learn a little bit about what not to do <laughs> with our microservice <laughs> architecture. So how did you, this is actually your talk, I think er, lit this afternoon. This maybe. afternoon, yeah, this uh, afternoon. 410, if you're at QCon now, 410, uh, come and join me in, I think it's Salon D, for the seven more deadly sins of microservices. So okay, cool. Yeah. So so just to just to make sure you're, we don't give away all your secrets. Yeah, Let's I'm just not do yeah. three of the seven. Oh, you're testing my memory now, Stephen. So like, I, I usually have my set pattern with the slides. <laughs> I'm not with the slides, but I'll certainly try. Well, what I can do, actually, is that there's some key takeaways. Yeah, And they're funny if there is three key takeaways. Okay, we'll which do those. Which go three across the sins. Yeah. Nice. Um, nice. So shall I lead into the first one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the first one is being aware of strategy. So a lot of times I go into um, companies and... Either there isn't a strategy, say, in terms of um, people tend to uh, move from one thing to the other, that kind of thing. Um, having success, but no real kind of formula for success, if you like, or no even valid approach for testing hypotheses, which is, I think is really key. Kind of the scientific method, in, in a sense. So I think strategy is super important. I take okay. a lot of my cues from Simon Wardley, the guy yeah. in, the, in the UK writes some amazing blog posts, uh, bits and pieces. Um, a lot of cues from Simon around strategy, situational awareness, where are we as a company going? What's the landscape like? As in now, for example, there's a whole bunch of microservice platforms shooting up. Probably says um, you don't need to build your own anymore. You know, there's, there's things yeah. like Cloud Foundry, yeah, I Kubernetes. I think we've got in there. If you're building your own, you're probably doing something wrong. I agree. Y you're gonna unless unless you're Chris Richardson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you're speaking to Chris uh, earlier in the yeah, week. Yeah. yeah, I had lunch with Chris yesterday. Actually, Chris is doing some really cool stuff with. I think it's uh, Eventuate. Very interesting. But there's lots of smart people thinking about those things. So yeah, know know where you are in terms of situational awareness. Super important. Um, and then sort of plan from there. Dr like create your tactics, knowing where the strategy is is really okay. key. Okay. Cool. All right. That's a good one. Yep. Second one is. Um, Principles and preparation. So principles, we're seeing people sort of copying things blindly, be that uh, the actual kind of concept of microservices themselves, how to operate teams in kind of squads, chapters, and guilds, which is a very familiar, familiar kind of thing from the Spotify uh, era. But you need to understand what the principles are for what you're doing. So if you're building microservices, they should be services built around business functionality, they should be independently deployable, yeah. and they should be running as independent processes, which, again, we see a lot of what I call mini-lifts, which are kind of mini-monoliths. So, um, <laughs> I think it's quite funny in the world where people are using heavyweight frameworks, heavyweight communication, that kind of thing. So also preparation. Once you know your principles in terms of what's available and, and what principles you're trying to address, um, do some preparation. So have a look what's out there and plan in terms of how you're going to carve your, your um, code base up. Things like domain-driven design, awesome there in terms of bounded contexts, yep. context mapping, which I'll talk more about. Um, and to just be aware that a bit of preparation does save a whole bunch of time later when you're trying to add, say, things in. I've seen people try to add in the classics are non-functional stuff like logging, monitoring, security, all these things. Okay, and, it and in later trying to retrofit existing microservice architectures for that's pretty painful, I would imagine. Bingo. And microservices don't make it easier 
uh, in that case. Yeah. Often we've seen people sort of retrofit security, and when you've got a monolith, you just have one thing to poke, you have one thing to fix. Potentially with microservices, you've got one edge, but a whole bunch of stuff. I've heard some people talk about Death Star security. <laughs> so you do that really strong edge, yeah, and then a weak inside. So as soon as like Luke Skywalker gets in, you're kind of screwed. Nice. So you need to be very um, conscious of security inside as well as outside there. It's a great talk here actually yesterday by um, Christina from Bishop Fox, I think she, uh, the company was called, that really rammed home this point. Combination of social engineering and some mild hacking skills, and she was doing a lot of damage. Obviously all white hat hacking that she was doing, but it really made me think, wow, yeah, this microservice stuff, like retrofitting security, not easy. Yep, yep, okay. Yeah, that's that's another good one. So preparation. Yep. The third one, and I'm trying to think what the third one is now. Um, oh, is responsibilities. Yes. Responsibilities. So I'm I'm not good at that one. I already know <laughs> I'm going to fail this one. So the interesting thing with responsibilities, we're finding some people. Uh, DevOps is almost like a carte blanche for I do everything. The yeah. problem is when people are responsible for everything, they're actually responsible for nothing. That makes sense. So I love DevOps. I genuinely do. And, and you see me talking about that at other conferences. Um, but it's not an excuse. Much like agile isn't an excuse to be sloppy. You know, some, some people say, well, we're agile and don't really have any methodology. Uh, DevOps is not, the s you know, is not an excuse to have no responsibilities. So I'm a big, big advocate of even simple things like racy matrices or RASCI matrices, depending on what you want to call them, that basically call out who's responsible, who's accountable, uh, who you need to consult, and who you need to inform when you're changing things. Yeah. Simple things like that just remove a whole bunch of like questions as in, should I inform Jane I'm changing the logging? Uh, is Bob okay with the new deployment style? Like a, a lot of companies I work for, they simply do not know who to inform of changes or who to ask opinions from. So real basic stuff, knowing your responsibilities. Again, DevOps is awesome, but there's things like SRE, Site Reliability Engineering popping up now, and uh, full stack developers, all bunch of different terms. Mm -hmm. And often they mean many things to many people. So actually defining responsibilities, yeah, bit boring, yeah, but super so useful. Not just doing everything. Yeah. Or well not just, uh, again, I think one of the most abused labels in software is probably architect. You know, I call myself an architect sometimes. Yeah. But what does an architect really do? Every company is different. Yeah. So same with DevOps. Now, when I go into DevOps, Actually I'm like... Actually defining what the roles are and who's the contact point for different things going to production and that sort bingo. of stuff. Yeah. Simple as it sounds, it's really fundamental. So. Okay. No, that's really good. So, um, and then I, I bet the... When you start with the sins, it's even more interesting. Yes, indeed. Because you yes. can show all the anti-patterns of, of how you get it. to this why, is why you actually need those um, takeaways. So I kinda, I, I basically, my, my pattern for today will be go through the seven sins, and then it will, it will lead into this conclusion. And you'll see common themes throughout them all in terms of those three things I mentioned there. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So how did you, how did you come up with the sins and takeaways? Was it from like actual projects you worked on or...? Got to be careful what I say here, <laughs> yeah, in case any of my clients are watching back in the UK or in the US. But um, yeah, pretty much. So I'm very lucky. The job I do, not only do I get to work hands-on quite a lot with a whole bunch of clients from startups to big organizations. Yeah, yeah. My uh, colleagues in Open Credo, like we constantly share stories. Um, so I get to learn lots of stuff like that. And I've been writing for InfoQ for a while now and I've come to a lot of the QCons. So I get to hear kind of the good things. Because QCon uh, and any conference, um, actually QCon's a bit different, but a lot of conferences I go to, the stories tend to be biased towards the good things that have happened. Yeah, it's like yeah. uh, survivor bias. You only talk about the good things. QCon's actually a bit more open in this respect. I've heard people talk about bad things as well, which is great. But by going to conferences, I get to learn all the good stuff, what's worked for Spotify, what's worked for Yodel, all these kind of things. Okay. And my day job, I get to see some of the more challenging parts, shall we say, which you know ultimately we help the clients fix, and I learn a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I, I think you learn more from the bad side than you do yeah. from the good side. And it's more entertaining <laughs> as well when it's talking about the bad stuff. Um, uh, my blog posts, uh, well my negative kind of blog posts, the seven deadly sins, get much more traffic than the positive, you know, the seven virtues, for example. People like to hear about the war stories. Yeah, exactly. No, that makes sense. Um, so what's up next for you? Were you, are you traveling back to the UK? Yes, yeah, so I'm heading back. I'm actually going to DockerCon oh next okay. week. I'm popping yeah, over yeah. to Seattle for a bit. Um, so we're doing some interesting stuff over in DockerCon. Um, uh, looking forward to that. A whole bunch of interesting cool. uh, announcements scheduled. And then heading back to the UK. And then I think, dare I say, I'm taking a break from travels for, uh, for a few months, uh, provisionally. Nice, nice. So Java 1 is on hopefully on the agenda uh, soon. Awesome. Looking, to, looking to go to that one again. And there's a couple of other conferences towards the tail end of the year as well. But I've been very lucky this year. I've gone to a lot of conferences already. So probably nice to get my hands back on fixing stuff for the yeah, summer months. Yeah, that's you know? good. Actually, I go into... Java 1 hibernation soon. 
because of all the preparation needed to get that conference off the oh ground. I, so. I can only imagine, Steve, as in, like, I know what goes on some behind the scenes at QCon. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. But Java 1 is even bigger again, I guess, yeah, in terms of yeah, the, the yeah, pure little, scale of the talks. A little, little bit kind of, of work, things. but it, it all comes together somehow. I always did. I've been going now for five years. I always enjoy it. As I love San Francisco, <laughs> it's, a, it's a real mecca, isn't it, for everyone who's yeah, like yourself yeah. who's into Java. So always meet up with Martin, with Ben, with Trish, very well-known names in the, in the conference scene. Um, it's just a great excuse to chat, share the latest kind of develops in developments in Java and the kind of surrounding stuff. So I have noticed over the last few years, there's been a branch out into the DevOpsy kind of stuff as well. Yeah, you yeah. Guys are yeah doing we've that, been sneaking that into the conference, more agile, more DevOps. Which I think is nice because that's kind of where we're at now, isn't it? Regardless yeah. of what language you code in, some of these things are really valuable. Yeah, even if you're not directly using the methodologies or using DevOps in your company, probably it's impacting the way you're doing development. I agree. Oh, and it, and it and probably it's a should be as well. For new job opportunities. So true. Some of the job like uh, listings I see these days, they do ask for a heck of a lot of stuff. Yeah. Just being aware of these things makes it easier. Cool. Nev never heard DevOps before. All right. Well, thanks very much for the interview thanks, here Steve. at QCon New York, Daniel. It's been a pleasure. As um, always. For folks watching the live stream, hold on tight because Peter will be up shortly for, uh, back, right for an interview. And um, you can watch the live stream at nighthacking.com and also see all the recordings. Um, and a special thanks to our audience here at um, QCon who's in enjoying a very good lunch. <laughs> they have, <laughs> thanks, they have great food here. <laughs> all right. So thank you guys.